So, Ron, so one of the things that um, we've been asked to talk about is content filtering, and it's often that we confuse content filtering with uh, how to keep our kids from going to sites that are either inappropriate or you know, bad for their moral compass. Right, right, I understand it. And we look at it in the context of how we want to protect the businesses that we serve, and we get confused by what is appropriate for where our employees are going to go versus what's going to benefit them as far as employees being productive. So in this overall big picture, what I wanted to focus on over the next few minutes is what are sort of the key components that make up good content filtering, or a better way of putting it is content control, because at the end of the day, we really want to control where they go without them feeling like we're taking away their uh, independence, if you will. And so I kind of see that there's sort of five main areas, and I know when we talk about one of them being security, you, you can really elaborate for me because security is not my area of expertise. Right. So I think of it in five kind of components. You've got productivity, True. you've got security, you've got usability, you've got privacy risk, and you've got legal. Right. When we think about content control and, and everything, we, we think about what is going to make our employees most productive, right? So you know, they are your employees. You're paying them to do a job. So that's also the problem too, right? They're they're my employees, so I'm in charge of what they're supposed to do and not do. So if I'm talking about productivity, what are some examples that you can think of that would dictate why I would want to put some sort of uh, content control or or uh, traffic control in place? From a productivity standpoint, um, you want your employees doing their job versus I don't know, buying something on eBay or watching the ball game, uh, especially, you know, with uh, things like March Madness or the or some of the baseball and football games, you know, these guys will watch this stuff. They'll stream it. Right. You know, it'll tear up everything. So, I mean, you want people doing their job. You're paying them to be at work. Sure. So, so the, the other one I can think of is with regards to productivity is um, we all use technology to do our jobs, one of them being we might use a VoIP phone or we use oh, yeah. uh, video chat or some sort of technology in that arena. And when... Employees are, like you said, using it to watch the football game or, uh, you know, cruise the eBay site. They're, they're preventing someone from having that quality experience because that traffic can't be optimized for those types of technologies. What, me downloading movies and streaming video? You know, as long as, those, as long as those videos are appropriate, you know, that they're part of your learning experience, I don't necessarily think that's necessarily lack of productivity, but, you know, I'm not the employer in every case. Right, right. So that, that kind of leads us into sort of the, the security component or security risk, if you will. Um, I know you, you're, you and, and your company spend a lot of time in the security arena with, with firewalls and the technology around unified threat management, which I know with the video series that we're doing, there's been a lot of talk around the UTM, the IDS, and, the, and I'm just going to run out of acronyms that I don't even understand. But why is content control so important in the bigger picture of, of threat management? Well, you've got to, one of the biggest reasons I think is that we've really got to look at the the threats that are out there on sites now. I mean, it's not just the the evil sites anymore. It's it's everybody's sites. Um, CNN, um, you know, Time, uh, Yahoo. These these sites all get uh, get hit. So you know, you're looking at it from a from a functionality standpoint. You don't want to get somebody going to a website that you think is safe and downloading some kind of malware or, or uh, you know, some kind of uh, technology like that. And that's, that's a real threat in, the, um, in this space. Um, you know, give them access to the sites they need and, and the places that you know and trust. Uh, sure. And do the rest of that stuff at home. So, so that brings up a good point. You know, we're, we're talking about content control, and I think it's assumed based on the way this conversation is going that we're talking about specifically browser content filtering, right? Right. Uh, I want to be clear that when we talk about content filtering, it also includes, you know, your email filtering, your um, browser content filtering, even search engine filtering is, is some examples of where filtering becomes really important that you don't want users just using random uh, search engines or having landing pages in their browsers that are, say, more appropriate for at home, which leads to, you know, a lot of that um, intrusion detection and threat management components where it comes down to if, if that 
ad, especially with ads, right? Right. Ads really get us into a bad spot because someone sees that generated ad that says, you know, hey, this headset that would work really well with your VoIP phone. And they're like, hey, maybe I should just check that out. And suddenly they're in a bad spot. So, right. And, and those things don't always come from your uh, from that trusted provider. So sure. when you're looking at Facebook, the ads in Facebook are coming from servers all over the world, not just from that one site. So they're not always trusted. You can pay, you can go out and buy uh, access to run ads, and right. that's the problem. You can put things that you don't necessarily need or want to see. Right. So that, that kind of brings us right into privacy, right? It gets into uh, the things that I do as an individual on my computer when I'm at work that has a direct correlation to uh, impacting the privacy or the intellectual property of my employer as well as the uh, my own privacy as an individual, my my social security numbers, my you know, please fill out this form, and suddenly I've I've given away the farm, and I don't even know who I'm talking to. Right, and that's um, you really gotta to to pay attention because when you're at work, the the tools that you're using at work, they're work tools. You're representing the company. You're not representing yourself. So the unless I'm in sales, right? Right, that's yeah. true. You need to be a you need to be separate. You need to be able to keep your private, your personal separate from your uh, from your work environment because the two don't always represent one another. So suddenly you're bringing this right into the next sort of big piece of this, which is legal. You know, what are the legal ramifications of not having something like content control or uh, content filtering in place to sort of keep siloed my personal from my my work? Uh, one of the biggest is is the work environment in general, just the, the general tone of your work environment. You don't want a hostile work environment. You don't want somebody walking past, you know, your policy says that it, on your lunch break you can do what you want. Well, you don't want somebody surfing inappropriate websites. You don't want to see images. You don't want to see the things um, that could put your company, your business at risk. It could be the client's client, right? So, you know, right. uh, an example of that might be uh, you're working with schools and you're doing construction management is, the, is, is our client, as an example. And the employee decides that he's going to spend his lunchtime serving inappropriate sites, and it just so happens that a 12-year-old student on recess happens to walk past the window and see something right. that he shouldn't. And now you have this legal, you know, huge mess on your right. hands. It's, that, it's the same, in, it's the same with things like um, you're at a at a retail facility, and they they've got public Wi-Fi, a, a hotspot, and you've got families sitting there, and somebody's sitting in that room surfing something that's completely inappropriate using your tool that you're giving to your uh, to your customers as a as a courtesy, and they're using that to to see something inappropriate. That could cause um, untold amount of damage, both from a from a legal perspective as well as to your reputation. So you've, you've even created another scenario, guilty by association. You right. know, I think if you go back to the world of Napster and and uh, Sony and and some of these other music sites, that sort of thing, and all of a sudden you've got an end user that may not be your client, but their client's client, and they're using that free Wi-Fi, and suddenly, because they did something illegal, therefore, by default, you're doing it as well. Right, and you don't you don't want people to show up on your doorstep one day and say, hey, um, we've tracked your IP address down to downloading all of sure. these movies, and then you, you go find out that the guy on the loading dock, when he's not on UPS or, or FedEx, is, you know, streaming movies down to his... Uh, to his desktop, and now you have thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in, sure. in illegal copyrighted material. Yep. So, Ron, so I think the biggest thing that we, you know, as we go back and look at the, the five key points and a lot of what solution providers in general forget about is that this is something that is often um, considered a commodity. You know, you got your antivirus, your anti-malware, and we bundle that with so many other tools, we don't even charge for it. And I think going to sort of the next level is, we have feature sets that involve, you know, controlling where the where we choose to go for content, right. that sort of thing. Now, what what should we be doing if if you think about this in the big picture and how we sell this? How do we go about selling this as a as sort of a siloed piece that actually can be a huge revenue generator, and at the same time, it's not a significant cost to us as a solution provider. I think the, some of the biggest pieces just to understand that security as a whole is a uh, it's something that touches all of a business. It's not a piece of technology. It's the combination of technologies. Sure. So whether you're doing um, your content filtering at your gateway to appliance or whether you're doing it as a cloud-based service or a, a, a software client, look at each one of these, these technologies. Look at how you can bring these things into a business, 
increase their productivity, but at the same time, you can make money by helping manage and control this. Remember, you're the advisor. Sure. You're the consultant. You're the guy to, to talk to them and bring them the best solutions. Sure. So we've, we've had several conversations about this over you know the months, the years that we've known each other. Um, I think about the go-to-market strategy, and one of the things that we have to consider is what's the outcome of why you would do content control? And we've listed all the reasons why you need it, but not necessarily what the business outcome is. And there's two different approaches, right? You have the agent model where I deploy something to an endpoint that right. allows that device to roam freely between my, my business office or, or my you know network and my home and the plane and wherever else. And then you have the it only works when I'm at the office because right. it's managed by some sort of perimeter device. Do you Do you see a lot of choosing one or the other, or do you think it's more of a combination of both that we need to be bringing to market and educating the customer that it's not one or the other, it's a, you need to put both of these in place? It really, it really depends on the customer's environment, and that's where you really step up as a consultant and as an advisor. Look at their environment. If they're carrying a laptop home, then you need a tool that goes with them because you need to ensure that that company asset is protected wherever it's at. If the computing devices sit in the office, then at the office is where your uh, where your concern is. Right. Sometimes it's a hybrid. So, so to wrap up, you know, I think it's really easy to say that there's a huge business out there for just this one component of a big security picture, and I want to make sure that everybody knows that we don't see this one piece being a standalone thing that you do separately, but that it's part of a, a solution stack that you bring to your customer and that you're highlighting the importance of it, that it doesn't get lost in a bundled service offering like we've done in the past with commoditizing right. things like antivirus and anti-malware, that it's just assumed it needs to be in there. This is something that has to be thought out. It's part of an education process so that their customer is part of that decision-making that says, we need this outcome. How do we get there? Right, exactly.